Good day everybody, this is Jerry from Backcountry Ranching. Today's video I'm heading out with Mike from the Emporium Outdoors and we're going out on another adventure in an area that he likes to go backcountry camping in. And later on in this video, we're going to discuss a lot of questions that I get asked, are hot tents safe? I guess a lot of people have some concerns and I don't know if they've never really been backcountry camping with a hot tent, but uh, I'll address some issues in just a little bit. All right, we just stopped. Better throw that back in the Jeep. Just gonna air down with Michael again from Porio Outdoors. Using my air up tool to air down. So this is our first stop. This is just right inside Porcupine Hills. And I mean there's already one campsite right here. This forest is pretty dense as well. But we're going to continue on. Alright. Air down. And now we're just gonna get turned around here. And continue our journey. Yeah, when you get this this melt and then cold and melt as sugary or the snow becomes sugary. And when it becomes sugary, it's like really slick. So you can see right there. Come up, yeah, we're good to go. So I'm about 16 PSI. I don't know how it's gonna be for some of the hills that might be super icy, but we'll definitely check it out. Right now I'm just kind of scouting the horizon. This view is pretty epic. Looking all the way around. Really nice views. Be a great place to camp on top of the hill. The only thing of course that you have to look out for is the wind. Yeah, so this is where we are. We get patches of snow, gravel, snow, gravel. It looks like for the next little while we're getting all into snow. It's interesting. Oh yeah, she's windy out there. Definitely gonna need to find a place down in the valley out of the wind because uh, that would be cold. It's always kind of nice to explore somewhere else new. I spent tons of times in the past couple of years in the Livingston public land use and down in Wipers and it's time to explore somewhere else. Fresh adventures. This is kind of nice because we're not in the mountains, but we're just in the foothills, probably about 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers away from the mountains. And this drive and scenery is just beautiful. Yeah, they classify this as a four x four trail, but realistically it's a, a road. Almost put her in the cabbage there too. Just gonna keep on trucking, check out some camp spots. Biggest thing is the availability of wood. Seems like there's lots of wood in that ditch too, so doing all right.
No, the spot with the picnic table is way better. Finally got to our spot. We're gonna set up. Right up on the side here. I'm not sure where oh looks like Michael drove around in a loop. Let's go find the spot where we're gonna set up. I don't know, maybe Michael want to set his hammock up there with the fire pit there and I'll set up in there perhaps. Okay, well getting things set up. It's my Russian tent behind me, which I love so much. Finally found a place to set up camp. I think Michael's just going up some area to get some wood. There's a tree that's knocked down and some loose stuff in there where he's going, but he is actually going to sleep in a hammock tonight, which is going to be interesting to see. I just brought the diesel heater out. That's all I'm going to operate tonight. And from my last trip, I've only sipped fuel from the bottom of the 10 liter mark to there. So I probably, last time I was out two nights, probably sipped, what, two liters? Two and a half, maybe. Just out for one night tonight. And this is, uh, Porcupine Hills are on the 4x4 trail and I've never Been down in this area and there's lots of beautiful camping here. It's really nice Okay, so now we're gonna get down to the down and dirty So I do all my hot tent camping in my Russian bear market two up mini hot tent and this weekend I got my diesel heater. So the most important thing you got to realize hot tent camping with the where they have a diesel heater or wood stove is carbon monoxide so you want to make sure your exhaust is not going towards the tent. And there's two reasons for that, because carbon monoxide will get inside your tent. And also, if the exhaust is pointed towards your tent, it'll burn a hole within anything within two feet in front of it. That's what I've discovered. And then, of course, if you run an exhaust tube coming out of your system, you don't want it near the fresh air vent for the heater. Otherwise, you might get carbon monoxide poisoning. I like to leave the little chimney hole open. To allow some fresh air and also if it gets too hot to let some of the hot air out. But we'll talk about the wood stove in just a second. It's time to put on the gum boots and gather some wood. Alright, get the old chainsaw out. Alright, we got this thing. It's way too big for the Ryobi. But it's got two offshoots here. I can probably just carefully try to cut down. Oh yeah, shut her down. There's lots of wood in there. Let's put that piece too. It's here for the night, so. And this thing is dry. So it'll burn really good. Right. 
guess I'll try to take down this one too. Close. Yeah, she came down violently. That's what Michael's sleeping in. Got his hammock. Are you gonna freeze? Nope. No? You gonna be good? I think it'll be good as long as it doesn't get too windy. We'll find out. Yeah. We already seen today that I had to anchor my tent down because the wind blew it over. But uh, I like the idea of a hammock. It's alright. Got a little fire going. Maybe I'll be able to try out that grill that I bought years ago. I pulled it out like five times never actually use it and the bar pit's pretty small and uh, that's just our wood for the night and we got more down there so we'll see how the evening plays out I'd like to get my drone out but this wind comes and goes and I don't want to get my drone out when the wind comes because that might not be good so I just we're just gonna sit and have a beer so Michael got me this Banded Peak Brewing, Mount Crushmore, it's a Pilsner. And what do you got? I have the uh, Micro Burst, Hazy IPA. Nice. So it's another great weekend that we came out camping. I was going to head her out and MJ was supposed to come. And her dog broke a bone in his foot and so she's at the vet today unfortunately. But Michael made it come out, otherwise that would have been a solo trip. All right, cheers, everybody. Cheers, Michael. Cheers. I don't know if I got that in the camera or not, but crushing a beer sure feels good. Not too often you come out in the bush and you get a picnic table. Let's we'll try that out. Cook something. Right now we're just cooking the paint off the grill. Yeah, little puppy's on there. She's on her little doggy bed, so she's not laying in the dirt, which is kind of cool. And this is what I got going for a snack. With some shells and that sauce. That's going to be so good. And I think the grill is seasoned now, so we're just going to get some pork cooked up. down for the night in the Russian tent. It was a beautiful evening. Michael's just getting set up in his hammock there. And I need to uh, need to get my my lantern is what I need. Where is it here? My lantern for inside the tent. There we go. Inside. Let's power up the Eco Flow. Turn on DC voltage. Let's uh, let's get some pump going here and go 3.6. Diesel fuel's going. We got the 
high amperage at first for startup. Once we get ignition, come on, baby. Come on. Oh, yeah. We're burning. All right, well, this ends the night. I'm about seven minutes in. You can hear the diesel heater, and the edge is already taken off inside the tent. Good to go for the night. Hopefully it keeps on going, because I don't want to get up during the night to go back out to my Jeep and get my minus 40 sleeping bag. I just got these blankets. Yeah, that's my new method of sleeping, is I just got my Serbian sleeping bag underneath couple of microfiber blankets for the top to sleep in in the winter time and uh, according to these Russian instructions this tent will survive a nuclear nuclear bomb so I think I should be good for the night anyways I'll see you guys in the morning hopefully I have a good night's sleep EcoFlow Delta powering the diesel heater yeah shut her down yeah I'm pretty liquored up right now. Pretty liquored up. Now the biggest thing with a wood stove used in the tent is of course is carbon monoxide. You don't want your chimney to be leaking smoke inside your tent which could cause some damage and you also want to make sure that your stove is not going to be exposing any kind of sparks or something that may catch your tent on fire because that's not going to end well. But besides for common sense, the only dangers that I find doing hot tent camping or any camping is wild animals are people entering your camp. That's pretty much it for me. I see you survived the night, hammock camping. Was it cold? I tried to feel your exact same suffering. I turned off my heater for like an hour and I couldn't do it. I just get a shot of your hammock. This is interesting. I could see myself sleeping in something like this in the summertime, but I don't know about the winter. It's nice that the sun's coming up sooner. A month ago, it'd be still dark. So another successful run with the diesel heater, and this is my third night camping without filling up. So filled it up to the bottom of the 10 liter mark. So I used that much diesel, probably four to five liters in three nights. Running it all night, that's pretty good. Morning starting off all right, it's not too cold. And it's time to start packing up. Just at the staging area, I'm using my air fill that I made. It's pretty quick. I'm running two compressors. That small one too that everybody made fun of. Still clicking. She's still working. Perfect, aired up. 
actually really happy with that four tire inflator system that I built a few videos ago. It has been working out excellent for me and it seems a lot quicker for filling up the tires. But I want to thank Michael from the Emporium Outdoors for taking me out on an adventure. And as you can see, as we leave the foothills, there's basically no snow left. And when I got home, I don't think Tom Cat was very impressed. He's giving me the stink guy. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.